So we're doing a laser little tripsy for uh, using a tulium fiber laser for a proximal third year thyasis. So this is somewhat uh, uh, obstructing stone in the proximal third. Uh, the settings would be around uh, 0.5 joules uh, and 20 hertz. Uh, usually with the ureter, you should not increase your, your settings above 10 watts. Uh, the maximum should be around, around 12 or 15. Uh, the method that I'm showing to you right now is uh, a method that uh, we call coring. So we try to to try to, to laser the core of the stone so that it can we can get to the to clear out the middle part of the stone uh, later on uh, if you will notice uh, we will try to collapse the stone so that we can easily dust it and avoid the injuries uh, towards the towards the unit so you can see the fine dust coming out uh, once the laser, the thulium fiber laser, touches the the ureter and stone. Um, you can see how how nice the, the dusting process happens when the thulium fiber laser touches the stone. Uh, it is actually something that uh, most of us would really love to do, uh, and it avoids doing a lot of uh, stone basket extraction. And uh, definitely, we are able to clear out the stone. Well, relatively faster since we don't have to go in and out of the ureter quickly. And as you can see here, uh, we are almost more than half cleared, cleared the stone. And, um, and we are going to try to start with the sides, sides of the stone. Uh, what's important is really actually you have to avoid uh, to hit the ureteral uh, ureteral mucosa to avoid any injury so a lot of people would uh, think that uh, that tulium fiber laser would be dangerous it's not the laser actually it's the surgeon so you have to be careful in uh, doing the laser procedure and make sure you avoid uh, hitting the, the ureters so that later on you won't have any uh, strictures that will be much of a problem uh, for your patient and you have to go back in and fix this so uh, once you have an enough or ample space uh, between the stone and the ureteral mucosa you can start uh, lazing the stone at the edge after you've done the core so some would do the coring up to the level that which they can see through the stone already like way past the uh, you can see the upper part of the ureter already however uh, in this case since this is a very big stone it's actually a 1.6 centimeter stone uh, we decided to gradually uh, after some coring gradually start again to the sides once we are uh, we have enough space between the ureter mucosa and the stone so this one actually um, is a very big stone and uh, we are lucky enough to clear out the stone later on uh, as you can see we don't really go back and forth uh, doing like removing the, the fragments you can see the that most of them are turn into dust and it's easily passed towards uh, passed uh, downwards towards the ureter orifice and if you notice um, it's not really there's no re really retropulsion when you're using a uh, sodium fiber laser the 
uh, stone stays in place and it, there's no not much of uh, uh, like a storm happening inside and you will be able to see uh, your progress very clearly when you're doing uh, when you're using a tulium fiber laser uh, for your Daryl stone so again you have to make sure that the stone really you know uh, that your laser settings would be uh, just right and perfect but most of the time we do not really uh, recommend too much of the settings it actually depending on your style the laser settings uh, would be dependent on the style of the surgeon or the urologist that's using the laser so but for me as this for this case I would really prefer a very low uh, laser and then I keep my energy at 10 watts to avoid the heat uh, increasing inside the compartment of the Z-Meter. So after a while you can notice that we are almost able to clear out most of the stones and uh, uh, there's some a little bit of uh, your tail injury but it's very minimal not similar to that of other injuries that you will see that would be it would cause you a lot of nightmares so we're almost done clearing out the stone uh, you can see that there's still no retropulsion you can clear out the stone quickly and then easily fragment and dust at the stone at the same time. What you can actually do here is just keep on and do some a little bit of pop warning. Uh, you can see that the stone will get into finer dust eventually. So later on, uh, you will see again that the stone will turn into dust and you will be able to clear out the, the ureteral orifice and be able to uh, let the patient die almost totally, like uh, keep the dust inside and let the urine. Uh, push the, the, the very small stones like the microrhythmics As, and as you can see now, um, the stones are already almost cleared out. It's almost turned into dust. They're very small stones and uh, we are quite sure after putting a stent or maybe just putting a uh, uh, urethra catheter, uh, we, we know that this, the, the ureter will be later on free of uh, stones. So. I guess I, I hope you liked this video. Uh, I hope I was able to share some tips and some tricks and using TFL uh, for uh, ureteral lithiasis. 
Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.